September October 1978. The Standard of the Bread by Jack Kelly. Several months ago, Jake Wilder sent me an article to print in the journal. The article was not written by Jake, it had been sent to him by a fancier who preferred to remain anonymous for publication in another magazine. The other magazine, the official publication of one of the registering services, refused to print the article because it wasn't signed. The journal declined to print it because the author had not intended it to be printed in the journal and since neither Jake nor I know the identity of the author it would be impossible to get his permission to do so. The article dealt with the current practice of showing pit bulls in conformation shows. Dog shows are rapidly becoming a favorite pastime of many fanciers and since there are many opposing viewpoints on the subject, I thought it would be appropriate to say a few words. On the subject. First of all let me say this. I have never read the standards by which pit bulls are judged at the conformation shows. Not because I've never had the opportunity, I have, they have been published in other magazines that devote themselves to that type of endeavor. It simply never interested me enough to know what the pit bull should look like. I know what I wanted in a pit dog and whether or not the dog was pretty or will made held little or no interest for me. I can't say that I objected to other fanciers showing their dogs. If that's what they enjoyed doing, then by all means do it and have fun. However, the article that Jake Wilder sent to me made a few points that I would like to pass on to you. In all honesty I could never understand why a pit bull fancier would want to show his dog. If he wanted a dog that was reasonably rough and had the anatomical structure to look like what a fighting dog should look like, then why not simply go to a breeder of Staffordshire Terriers and buy a dog that had been bred for the past 40-odd years to be a show dog. The American Kennel Club has been registering the American Pit Bull Terrier since 1936 as a purebred pedigreed dog. True, they changed the name to Staffordshire Terrier so that the public wouldn't get the impression that the breed was developed for fighting, which of course, they were. However, prior to that time all the dogs were bred down from common ancestors so it only follows that they are the same breed of dog. One bred exclusively for fighting in the pit, the other bred to look like what a fighting dog is theoretically supposed to look like. The same can be said for many other breed of dog. The Field Dog Stud Book is a registering service that registers many of the hunting breeds such as the English Pointer, English Setter, Irish Setter, Brittany Spaniel etc, etc. The fanciers that use those particular breeds of dogs to hunt with, register their dogs with the Field Dog Stud Book and anyone wanting to purchase a dog that has been bred to hunt need only to buy from a breeder whose dog or reg is to with that service, to ensure at least, that the dog he is buying was at least bred down from field stock. Others who simply like a particular breed of dog but don't care whether or not he will hunt, had the option of buying from an AKC breeder who was mainly concerned with the anatomical perfection of what he breeds, with little or no concern as to whether or not the dog possess the qualities for which he was originally bred. Now many of the folks showing pit bulls in these beauty contests claim that they are not breeding dogs for the show but merely showing their dogs. There. Dogs that were bred for gameness and ability, and if they never lose sight of that important fact, then I agree, it is just a harmless diversion. However, I do see more and more advertisements in the magazines that are an integral part of the registering services, advertising dogs from pedigrees that I just cannot associate with proven pit bulls never mind that they are very careless with the word game, the pedigrees are pure and simply the pedigrees of dogs bred to be show dogs. 1. I'm sure there are many purists among us who can show their pit bulls without losing sight of what the breed is all about. But what about the fancier who gets really involved in showing his dogs? The fellow who believes that it's important to win a prize at a show, after all the object of any competition is to win. Suppose he has a tested bitch that's also pretty enough to win a conformation show, what will be chose as a stud when he decides he wants to raise some puppies? Suppose he has two studs at his disposal, one, ch. S.I.R. Gaylord of Rough Town, 75 pounds of muscular bulk, He's won Mr. America honors whenever and wherever he was shown. The other Joe Dokes C.H. B.O.B. a bow-legged, roached back, cowhocked three-time winner in the pit. Which does he breed to? If he has to think about it, then showing dogs becomes more than just a harmless diversion, and someday, about 40 years from now we'll have a third breed of dog to join the Staffordshire and the American pit bull terrier, all descendant from a common ancestor.
Maybe they eleven just take the word pit out of his name and call him the American Bull Terrier, or think up some insignificant name to call him, like the all-purpose American Bulldog. As I've said previously, if you want a show dog, the Staffordshire Terrier is the dog for you. If you must have a pit bull and insist on showing him, then you better never lose sight of what the pit bull is all about. When pretty starts to mean more to you than game, then our breed is in a whole lot of trouble.